seated there in a custom-made blue pinstripe suit with a blood-red rosebud in his lapel was a man who might have been anywhere between 45 and 60. His hair was black and full, combed straight back on a high forehead, yet his square-cut goatee and pointed mustache were white as ermine. He was tanned and elegant, his eyes a distant, ethereal blue. This is how William George Burke described Louis Cipher in his novel, Falling Angel. In this video, we'll compare differences between how Cipher was depicted in the source material and the film as performed by Robert De Niro. Angel Heart was released in 1987, written and directed by Alan Parker, and based on the novel Falling Angel by William Jortsberg. In the book, Angel first meets Cypher in a New York restaurant. It is a meeting between the two of them. The backstory is given just as seen in the film, including Cypher's insistence verifying Angel's identification. Cypher shares his experiences, popping in unexpectedly at the Poughkeepsie Hospital, but he does it alone, and not with Winesap, as spoken in the film. The book has Cypher visiting a second time, during visiting hours, but was denied seeing Johnny Liebling. Cypher tells Harry, I grew quite indigenous. I'm afraid I made something of a scene. That was a mistake. The receptionist threatened to call the police unless I left immediately. In the movie, Harry meets Cypher for the first time inside the Kingdom Mission. Cypher's attorney, Herman Weinsap, introduces Angel to him. This is where Angel is given backstory into Johnny Liebling and is hired to investigate his status at the Sarah Dodd Harvest Private Hospital in Poughkeepsie, New York. Cypher explained he didn't want to make a fuss when given the runaround. Unlike the film, where Cypher seems so polite and even-tempered, the book tells us otherwise that he is capable of a temper. Another cosmetic difference, as read in Georgeburg's description, while Cypher is a well-dressed man, he does not sport a white beard. Falling Angel's second meeting between Angel and Cypher happens over the telephone. Like the film, it happens after Harry's interview with Fowler in his home before his unfortunate demise. Angel confesses that finding a missing person after 15 years is too much for him, but Cypher is adamant and offers Angel more money to continue his investigation alone. Cypher even offers to pay in advance. This keeps Angel's attention. And in the movie, Harry's second meeting with Cypher comes inside an Italian cafe. Possibly it's a subtle tribute to the source material to have the two meet in a restaurant. The narrative is essentially parallel to the source material, but Angel shows more trepidation with Father's death and wants out. Cypher shows contempt for Favorite by subtly comparing him to a slug. While in the book, Cypher's voice over the phone grew corrosive. Cypher gives a cool yet calculating response and tempts Harry with a bonus. Harry accepts it. Of course, with a face-to-face -face meeting, we get the boiled eggs. The source material's third meeting has similarities as far as the context of their conversation as the film. However, the tone couldn't be more different. First, Angel meets Cypher inside a fancy French restaurant where pâté is on the menu. This comes after Harry uncovers Cypher's side quests, performing as El Saphir for a certain reverend in Harlem. Cypher tells Angel he's on his way to the Vatican to meet the Pope. The film version takes the base narratives from the book. Harry speaks of Margaret's death, but Angel Heart makes no direct references of Cypher's sideshow acts. Cypher explains he was in the area with a speaking engagement in Baton Rouge. For the casual viewer, this makes Cypher look like a respectful businessman, touring the country so he can afford to pay for the suits Italian eggs, and private detectives. But this pays a very subtle homage to Cypher's hobby. The book has Angel follow Cypher throughout New York City, where Angel sees the mysterious man in the black suit making performances on his free time, from magic shows and small stage performances to religious sermons in Harlem churches. This takes us back to Reverend Love. In the book, Love introduces a guest speaker as a holy man of great wisdom named L. Cipher, but it is Louis Cipher, dressed like a sultan. 
Angel looks on and listens as L. Seifer gives a passionate speech about being strong and merciless. But Seifer's words, his advice, are strangely descriptive of three recent murders. The crowd is driven into a frenzy, waving and shaking their hands. There is a lot in the Pastor John's mission that was inspired from the book, including references to violence inflicted by the congregation. And we even get to hear a smidgen of L. Seifer's speech in the film. It's said rather calmly when Seifer explains he has an old-fashioned sense of honor, telling Angel, in a church, he believes in an eye for an eye. It also may be paying tribute to the source material. While Seifer makes no mention of traveling to Catholic holy sites, he and Angel do meet in the Catholic Church, and according to lore, it was part of Johnny Liebling's childhood. Before we continue with other Cypher differences between the film and source material, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this video and want to see more content like this one. A few other Cypher facts found in the novel but not the film include Harry Angel's dreams. In the film, he has daydreams, or daymares, about a certain event on New Year's Eve, 1943. But in the book, Angel has nightmares in his sleep about Cypher, including one where he turns into a bear. Angel also turns his investigation on Cypher and follows him through New York City at much displeasure of Herman Weinsap. Harry discovers Cypher, posing as a small-time magician inside a penny arcade flea circus, and Cypher even has an agent. Cypher's performance has to be read to be believed. George Berg's description of the devil is part pitchman and snake oil salesman, attempting to be metaphysical by leveraging human frailties. This side of Cypher is omitted in Alan Parker's film. As found in both book and film, Angel and Cypher have one final meeting, one final confrontation. What we see in the film is Angel rushing to Margaret Kruzmark's place, ransacking it, trying to find a canopic vase holding dog tags. Here is where Harry discovers the truth about who he is. Cypher appears, waiting for him in the front room. Harry finally has an epiphany, not that one, and realizes Louis Cypher is Lucifer. As Harry drifts into another daydream, Cypher quietly makes off with Harry's dog tags and pistol. He has enough to convict Angel for the rest of his life, what's left of it otherwise. The book is very similar, but as it's based entirely in New York, it reads Harry returns to his office late night, finding the place had been ransacked. He's knocked out cold and wakes up to Cypher dressed in a tuxedo, pouring water on him. Like the film, there's a joke about Cypher's name, revelation that Winesap was killed in a horrible accident. Cypher is vocal and upfront about taking Angel's pistol and dog tags. But unlike the film, Cypher also grabs Angel's horoscope as drafted by Margaret before her death. Angel had put it in a safe rather than destroying it. The book implies it was the horoscope that will convict him. Another minor difference from the film was Cypher's disappointment hearing that Ethan Kruzmark was killed by Harry Angel deliberately. Cypher commented, The loss of one of the faithful is always regrettable. Let me know in the comments below. What did you think of Robert De Niro's performance as Lucifer? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, When in Manhattan, Mephistopheles is quite a mouthful. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.